Serotonin syndrome. It can be potentially life-threatening, but it's from an overactive central and peripheral serotonergic mechanisms. It ranges. Unlike neuroleptic malignant syndrome, which is pretty much severe, this is a range. It goes from mild to more severe to life-threatening. The first case, the only case I've seen of it this year was somebody who I saw that was put on uh, an antidepressant <coughs> for pain usage, so it was duloxetine, and then was subsequently added on multiple pain medications. So we had two different people. He had an orthopedic issue. Two medications got put on. And he called me and said, Doc, my tremor's out of control. So I said, okay. I said, I can't come in because I have severe back pain, so let's do virtual. I see him. I've known him for seven, eight years now as a Parkinson's patient. Significantly divorced tremor. And I looked at him. I said, sir, either your Parkinson's is worse because of your recent stressors. You got an infection, which would this, or three, you got a drug interaction. I said, I need you to go to your urgent care. Go get a urine sample done. Go get this done. Two, if the Parkinson's meds I'm not sure about, I want the drug interaction to reduce one of these other meds. Did it. Within four days, we called him back. We did a virtual tremor had started to calm down because it was a short-acting pain medication. So I've seen this, and I was shocked that I saw this in an outpatient setting because my idea is mostly inpatient on these individuals, and I've seen inpatient ones, typically from people who overdose SSRIs with a combination of other medications. So mild, but here's your triad. Mental status change, autonomic hyperactivity, and some neuromuscular. You see the overlap. Now, the triad helps you only to a certain extent. It just puts you in one of those two buckets in some ways. Now you've got to say, okay, is this serotonergic medications? Is this something else? But what's unique about this is this, the serotonergic pathway peripherally, bowel sounds. Somebody with diarrhea, hyperactive bowel sounds. Something that no neurologist or psychiatrist checks for. But it's important if you see that in the history as you're doing a consult for alteration of mental status. And alteration of mental status consults go to one, both sometimes. We both come in and do an alteration of mental status consult from different angles. So it's interesting to see that. We see the hyperreflexia clonus, but more importantly, what makes the diagnosis is the presence of these medications or the recent change in these medications. Sometimes if people admit to overdosing some of these medications. So you can see <coughs> people on multiple antidepressants, combination of SSRIs, TCAs, MAOB inhibitors. Tramadol is unique, because tra you won't think of tramadol as serotonergic, but it is. He was on tramadol because he didn't want to be on, on narcotic medications that were his habit forming. So the orthopedist did the smart thing of putting him on tramadol, but the pain specialist had increased the duloxetine. And I had, of course, an MAOB inhibitor from his Parkinson's. So you can see we all played the role into this final patch of it. And when the moment he complained about tremor, the call came to me because I'm the person managing his Parkinson's. So antiemetics would play a role in it, valproic acid, a lot of different medications. Un other hidden sources. HIV medications and linazolid. Now, nobody starts linazolid outpatient, but if you see it inpatient, somebody starts linazolid, they may be on an SSRI, a couple other meds, and suddenly they end up with all these symptoms. Think of this. So, pathophysiology, here's your serotonergic systems, the raphe nuclei, the projections that are so diffuse. The lower portion of it on muscle tone, GI portion of it, and the central projections. <clears throat> to me, the hyperreflexia, the GI bowel movements and the meds make this. What really differentiates is meds in DRB, with DRBAs versus serotonergic meds, if you're concerned about this. What do we do with this? Same thing, supportive treatment, IV fluids, electrolytes. Most people, if you discontinue the medications, it will resolve. Few people might need some help with, the, with for sedation issues or orthostasis, but most of this will be self-limiting and resolving as long as you say, aha, this is the medication I've got to take you off of it.